quite nice to get this part of transport as well. Jamie, yep. yeah, can you just say what's going on here, why people are here and what the situation is and what the trees are? Right. Um, well, as you can see, when you, if you've been down there... Can you speak the, a little louder? I'm sorry, sorry it's I'm just so tired. No, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's just that the microphone's wrong. Right, OK. Well, I've been very alarmed and so have a lot of the local people because just to my left down here on the road, the A3 between Portsmouth and London, there's an avenue of uh, sycamore trees that were planted, some in 1919, by Canadian comrades for those who'd fallen or died of the influenza epidemic because they were stationed around here. And then later in 1950s, others were planted to supplement and enlarge the avenue for the veterans of the Second World War. They've obviously become a well-loved feature to all the local people. And of course, I don't know about the people who travel regularly to, to Portsmouth, but they're certainly noticeable. Um, they're, they're the only beautiful feature on you know, the A3, which is a pretty boring uh, road now. Um, so I was very alarmed, and I know a lot of local people are, that when the notice was in the press that they were coming down, and there was a protest by the parish council and the preservation society to try and prevent this, but the reasons given was that the trees were dead, dying and diseased, and if they weren't that, then they could well be a hazard to the traffic. Um, Is that true, about, about being rotten or Well, diseased? today we've had an independent tree specialist from Merris Wood, who I believe is going to be here tonight. And he has gone up this afternoon, I think there may be two, and they've gone up and looked at the trees. They've done uh, bore samples from the trees themselves and soil samples, which I understand the Forest Enterprise didn't do. Then they've also obviously gone along and visibly viewed the trees. And they've said, they said that there are obviously some branches that need attention, but the wood from their core samples are very, it's very, very dense wood, very strong wood, and that these trees are not old, and that they haven't found one trace of disease in the trees. So they're not going to be a hazard then, really? Well, they're not going to be a hazard from disease. And then, of course, you come on to the fact that they are close to a fast road. Right, now there is a no speed limit, well obviously there's the nation, the 70 mile, but obviously you can see they go further, faster than that. They come out just up there of a 50 mile speed limit, when you go through the lights, uh, up just past this little chef, there's a 50 mile speed limit. That, that, well now of course there is, while they've got one lane, but usually that ends and there's no, you can go at 70 down here because it's dual carriageway. There wasn't a central reservation, but since they've, uh, it's got a faster road, they've now put in a central reservation to protect passengers, uh, car uh, travellers, and uh, from hitting the trees as they come off the road. And what happened last night then? I mean, because I hear people were arrested. I was arrested, and uh, five other people 
And what were you doing at the time of your arrest then? I was, had my arms round a tree and in front of the tree a young man was sitting at the foot of the tree with his knees up to his chest sort of thing, to, just to sit there as a passive protest, protest. And there was a policeman on the right of the tree standing here beside me and a ch chap with a chainsaw there who was obviously wanting to cut the tree and that's why this young man was sitting at the base. So I came up to add my support and clasp my hands like that and the policeman said to me, take your arms from around that tree. And I said, no, I'm not going to take, why should I? I'm not doing anything wrong. He said, take your arms from around that tree and I'd ignored him. So he said, if you don't take your arms from around that tree, I shall arrest you. So I don't know if I said, well, go on then. Or I think I just ignored him because I was, you know, it was very dark, although there were arc lights, you're very aware that this is all going on at night. And um, <clears throat> so I just didn't make any response, I don't think. So he took my, he took my arms physically apart and said, I'm arresting you. And I went passively and didn't resist at all to the van. And when I got to the van, the young man in front of the tree had gone. He was, well, I don't know if it was him, because I say it was still dark, and there were four officers, one at each sort of limb, and he was lying sort of sprawled on the, on the road, <coughs> because it was the road, but it's closed, obviously. And um, uh, I, they were saying things, but I, I, I was so tired and sort of dazed. What time did you get arrested then? How long had you been here? Well, I don't know, Definitely. because I only have a watch on me. You and get arrested for? Two... 2.30, perhaps 3, and um, anyway, we were put in the van and then four other people followed, so that was six of us. And why did they arrest you? On what grounds were they arrested? Well, when they charged me, or, no, they didn't charge me until the morning, they, well, when, no, they, I'm sorry, I'm so confused, they, no, the charge sure. is, I am now charged with um, aggravated trespass and um, hugging um, a tree, okay? <laughs> So that's what my charge is, and I'm going to appear in court on the 4th of May. And so that's that into the criminal justice book. That's now? right, the new that one that they've brought in. I didn't resist at all, and um, I didn't make a phone call at the off at the station because I didn't want my husband had gone earlier, and he does work, and I wanted him to be able to have some sleep. I thought, well, I'll, I'll ring him later. And then I thought, well, perhaps I ought to let somebody know I'm here, although I'm because I didn't know who else had been arrested in another van. So I rang the bell in the cell, because they put me in the cell, and I said, uh, I'd like to make a phone call now. So she said, all right, if you give me the number, we'll find it while we... And I said, well, I want to ring Southern Counties Radio. And her face sort of... And she just, just she pushed the flap up and said, I'll find out. She went off and spoke to somebody, and I didn't hear... Well, when you were in a cell, I, I found out that you get a very... You don't get an idea of time. It's sort of mm. timeless. So I thought, well, surely she must have at least 10 minutes. It doesn't take that long to find a number. So I said, fine, I'd better ring at the bell again. Now I thought, well, I'll wait another five minutes. So I did, and then I thought, well, no, I'll ring. So I did. She came back and said, uh, we're trying to contact the chief inspector who's on the A3 um, to verify... Um, this call or something. Oh, no, first, then I think before that she came back and said, uh, oh, no, that, that's right, so she went off. No response, and I thought, well, I must ring it once more, so I did. And she said, um, we're trying to get, um, uh, she's, I don't, uh, no, she said, oh, you've got to, she said, um, can you give me a name um, of somebody you want to contact? So I said, no, I want to just contact somebody in Southern Radio. So, you know, whatever I said before, I'm so tired, I'm sorry. No, not at all. I don't know. I but so I fair. said, um, I'm determined. I've been in touch with Mar Winnie, who's the Minister of Transport. Yeah. And I now understand that he has pers been personally informed of what's going on down here with the, with the trees. And I've also spoken to Michael Mates, and who's put the phone down on me. Um, he's my MP. I did say to the press that these young people here are in fact doing the job that my MP should be doing for me, trying to prevent this until we are given the facts, because what we want is proper consultation and presented with the facts of the state. Nobody's seen anything on paper about the state of the trees or accident statistics. Of course, the authorities dealing with it have, but not the public. Yeah. So that's what I... This is the real... And I, because the, these are memorial trees to dead servicemen, and I think it's just... Not only is it abominable but also at this particular time it would be abominable any time but with the VE celebrations coming up it's even more crass and insensitive 
I wanted to get a priest to judge, because this is a peaceful vigil you're wanting to hold to protect the trees. I wanted to get a priest to come and give a, a short blessing. And um, the Canadian veteran, Slim Bradford, who is very deeply wounded by this, also wanted to try and arrange a bugler. And so did a, another parishioner in grey shot. He said they should at least have the last, whatever it is called. Do you think you know, that will happen? That well, be able to take place on it, that, not maybe. at the moment, no. no. Um, but this is the sort of thing they should have organised. Yeah. They should have yeah. had proper respect for why those trees are there. But do you think people are going to get arrested this evening? Probably. And are you willing to get arrested again? Yes, I am. Yes, yeah, I am willing to because this. I don't feel I may have technically broken the law. But I don't think I have morally broken the law. I think the people that are desecrating that monument to uh, a living monument to with the dead people, and that they are buried in Bramshot Church, a little way along here, 315 dead Canadians and 90 in Greyshot, the village where I live. But these trees represent as one for each of those soldiers. And they're all being chopped they're, most well, of them. I think I was told by the Forest Enterprise that there are 376 um, sycamore trees. Uh, there might be some Norway maples in that because the Ministry of Transport did put some in when they damaged some, when they jewelled it. And they are hoping over these five nights <coughs> to, to fell up to 229. So I feel, you know, that... Uh, How long do you think it's going to take them to do it? I mean, when are they plan to... Well, I, I, well, they are supposed to finish. This little chef has been told they're usually open until 10 o'clock at night. But Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, and I think Friday, well, you can check that for yourself, are to close at 8 o'clock. So you can see. And of course, the notice on the road says close for a week between the hours. So I feel that when we step on that footpath, which has a prohibition on it, for the whole time, it doesn't open up at all until next Wednesday at uh, 23, you know, one minute to midnight, um, anybody stepping, they could have arrested us at any time last night or on that, on that footpath. They can arrest you. They don't have to let us on tonight um, without arresting us. Last night they did because they didn't know, you know, and they were trying to be... So it's up to their discretion then, really, isn't That's it? That's right. I mean, the police, I think, were very sympathetic and, and uh, you know, well, obviously they can't say that, I'm not saying anybody, but you can tell what people's attitude is and, uh, of course, there were some that had to be stiff and rigid, but then, you know, I understand that. Um, the Forest Enterprise have obviously taken their stance and are not bending at all. The, the actual workers were sort of totally incensed. Well, I mean, their spokesman was. I wouldn't like because there were some young men there. I don't know how they really feel about this now that they realise what's going on. Um, <clears throat> and how many protesters are you hoping for this evening? Do you think a few, you know, there should be more, perhaps? Oh, there should be more, but I don't know. You know I mean, it has been in the television, apparently, today. And I've been... I did take the phone off the hook when I got home for two hours. I've had two hours sleep in about 48. And um, once I put the phone, because I wanted people to know I was there, but engaged, sort of, as far as they were concerned. And so I put the phone on when I got up. I have one cup of tea since I've got home, and the phone hasn't stopped. Right. So we'd have to write it down. Right, so the full name, do you want? Well, just what you want to put under your... I'm Cynthia Goldthorpe. Up about midnight. You know, and that was it. And... Uh... I don't know, I mean, I think the locals, the few locals who came two nights ago have lost heart. Uh, well, they would... The footpath was closed on Saturday, but they didn't do anything. Uh, Sunday, because of our bugged phones, but they have been. Yeah, but is it possible to get this chair? Yes, it's right there for you. You go back onto the pavement, he'll come and talk to you. Can you make sure though, Gav? Yes, he's on the, he's on the blower to, to him now, look. I'll get him a coffee.
they can probably get it stopped. Yeah. So can I use your name when I phone him tonight? Yes. Yeah, oh, super. I will do. And, uh, as they went past us. Uh, you're both supposed to be coming down to meet this uh, gentleman from Jeff, but we know he's good. Right. In fact, Sorry. <laughs> I'm just speak because he's. Well, he can talk to me if he likes. Well, yeah, but isn't Mr. Farger the one that. Well, I'm mm -hmm. Mr. Farger's boss. Oh! <laughs> okay. Well? Oh, this is, this is him. This is Hello. This is Hello. 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 Oh, fact. Hello. Sorry, Nigel Fagg. Nigel Fagg, yeah. David Williamson. Hello. Well, I say hi. Well, it's not a late meeting. It's a fun talk to you. Mm. Mm. Well, I'm going to say hello to Mr. Fagg. Hello. 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 I'm a Canadian and I was over here in the hospital uh, convalescing during the war and during this I was in the hospital here with a lot of others. Now you can imagine that uh, when you've been uh, in a victory convalescing and recovering and regrouping is buoyant but when you've had uh, all these uh, been defeated like we are at the end uh, and you're distressed and uh, you've uh, lost your comrades, you don't know anything about them, where they are, and the, at that time the outcome of the war was by no means certain. But then we were brought out here and shown the trees that were planted for our past generation in 1914, and they pointed out that they had the worst time and stuck it out and come out on top, and so it bucked us up and gave us time. So that's why we've always been having a pilgrimage to here, and this is the only uh, memorial to the Canadians. The Yanks got a big These monument, trees here. and the and the Poles got one. This is the only thing we got. And when this appears, it's gone, really. Mm -hmm. So what we wanted to do, we were asking them to put it off until the 26th of uh, April, so that we could have our pilgrimage, bring our pipers and our uh, band and our padre, and pass the thing over to the next generation type yeah. of thing. So then they could go and plan but they couldn't see their way clear. And what gets me more than anything is the lies that came out like uh, they were rotten, they were diseased, they were at the end of their life and all that, which we know and now they've admitted it's not. And now we know, you see, the only thing it is is because of the road. Now this man has told me there's no hidden agenda, but what we know that this road has to be updated to meet the requirements of the European harmonization. And that's the top and bottom line. 
And if they would have went to the people, now all these people are here, they're not communists or uh, uh, they, what they're trying to do is keep community together. Uh, and what they miss, you see, they want to be part of the decision taking of their lives and everything else. That's why they're all uptight. And that's why this government is losing their friends, because they've insulted the fair play of the British people on everything they've done, even a thing like this. So that's what, why I've been here. But I've got to go back now and make some phone calls, because the Canadians that were coming over... How do they feel now that they know that Well, I'll tell you exactly what they said. But first of all, I must tell you, the Queen was marvellous. And we got a marvellous letter for him, and she forwarded it on to the, uh, the uh, Department of Transport. They pretend they haven't got it. Right, but and you're going to 10 Downing Street, I hope I'm phoning it when I get back to see what's going on, because the people from one of the press said they sort it out for me. Now, here's what the Canadians said to me when they phoned up, and, because they were hearing all about this, especially last night. Mm. And they said, because on my end here, I've been doing the bookings and the coach tours for their... Uh, he said, we're going to forget it, Slim. God damn it, he said, if they don't want it, he said, we're going to divert and go to Holland. And I said, wait a minute. I said, people are trying to defend... No, he said, look, he said, uh, in Holland, they got memorials. Over here, this is the only memorial to the Canadians. They're knocking it down. In Holland, he said, uh, we've got memorials to Canadians. And when they say at the going down of the... Son, we will remember them. They mean it. He said, I'm not bringing my widows, the widows and the grandchildren to stand around tree stumps. Yeah, right. Yeah. And so that was it. And that's why, I, and that's why they're all uptight. But I've, these people have been so marvelous, and I've got to get that across to the Canadians. I must. You see, they don't realize that they only see the... have tried to stop it. People have tried to yeah. kind of delay yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Is that worth it or not, Jamie? Um, just don't shine it right on it, just shine it down there. Just a bit up. and get these people to speak, these, these specialists, to speak to the Home Secretary. And let's have all this, a bit of fairness and honesty, as Mr. Yeah. 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 Not. It's mad. I 
be special, he knows where it's going to fall. Dave got the freedom for you to enforce what Hitler would have brought in 50 years earlier. Number um, number 997 and number 626. How does it feel to know that you are enforcing what Hitler would have brought in 50 years ago? The Criminal Nazi Act. Are you aware of what they're going to do? I'm very aware, clearly a lot more aware, aware than you are. are the Canadian authorities are happy and actually The Canadian authorities have been systematically lied to about this. I know all about it.
finish that section and then move across the other side of the road, okay? Mind yourself as you... M. Anderson, W. Andrews, W. J. Andrews, S. Oxford, A. Bailey, J. Bailey, H. Baines, A. Back, S. Baldwin, F. Barbier, C. Barnett, C. Barnhart, A. Beer, F. Beer, R. Bell, T. Bell, T. Benson, T. Berry, C. Burley, E. Black, W. Blackburn, J. Bloomer, B. Borgerson, E. Brooker, C. Brown, H. Brown, K. Brown, W. Brown, W. Buckingham, F. Bulmer, F. Bunce, A. Burns, G. Burr, A. Bursey, L. Butner, D. Campbell, G. Campbell, N. Cornish, J. Cowell, C. Cowell, is this recorded? Oh, it is now. The, the concept that the state is the servant and not the master of its people, and that we have the right to choose the form of government placed upon us by secret ballot. Can I, can I just ask you, Mr. Mates? saying now that uh, the reason why the world has been carried on now is so they can have the new and more in place for the Tell me, uh, yeah, but tell me, no, they want to get the road done before they, tell me, if uh, I went along to your father's grave or mother's grave or your son's soldier's grave and said to you, oh, well, I've cut down the, motor, the stone, I've thrown it away somewhere, never mind, I'll get you another one and put it somewhere else. 
you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and these trees don't belong to mates, they don't belong to the government. The people of this parish here put them in in 1919, each one for a named soldier. And in 45, when we all come from Dieppe and convalesced here, they put the, uh, when we were in, uh, here in uh, 42, uh, then at 45 they came and put them in here for us. Uh, and uh, it isn't much to ask that no. we've been coming. And all we wanted to do, and this the Queen agreed, to uh, come with our, our pilgrimage and get it over with and properly then bring a piper, the padre, the uh, Google, the last post to the ceremony handed over, and then the new thing. Yeah. Now, what do we need to see? Ah, yeah. yes, now look here. The effect of this order is to authorize the prohibition of pedestrians in the length of the A3 between the center line and North Down. I'm not a pedestrian. Yes, but I'm not going to be walking. There to show the media what the di dispute and the thing is all about. Oh, so I, I can see you that. Know, General inquiry yeah. relating to this notice has to be made in writing to Mr. Burke. There's a telephone uh, uh, number here. Can uh, have you got a, 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 a robot? I haven't got a robot. No, no, just one minute, just one minute. I'll look on the other side. I'll leave my fingerprints on it for you. Don't worry. Don't worry. The order came on 4th of 5th of April. It's a maximum duration of 18 months. 18 months we can't walk up and down here. Did you hear that? Did the media hear that? We're not going to be able to walk on up and down here for 18 months. 18 months, you put a leg on this. Yes. There you are. Uh, well, it will take place during April 1995. As a maximum, oh, see, it can yes, it can take 18 months. It's not necessarily going to take 18 yeah, uh, months. Yeah, not necessarily, yeah. but of course. It could do if they wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. The fact, and we haven't. Got So that's an invitation from Wagenbornen. If you read there, I'll put my glasses on because I understand the standard reading and I'll, I'll read it to you. And I'll show you the difference that these people are treating. Well, here's a good light. So these, this is, these are the German veterans? Yes. We can just turn them a little bit to camera. Yes. Yes. Then, then we can see and, you. and here it is my pleasure to invite you to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the liberation of our village and you, because you are our honourable guest this week. Right. I am the guest of honour this week for these people. And now, that's isn't the, that's that a that's difference? The German that's the German Veterans Association. No, no, the Dutch. The Dutch, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, gosh, I, I can't, I can't yeah. help it. But I, I must, while you young media here, can I tell you something about your, yourselves, about the British, because we've been calling these people down here like you people all there, were over there fighting, some people with two rifles between three, they took on the armed might of Germany without the proper equipment and they held the fort while people got, and we didn't have to fire a shot in fear until after we had the training and the benefit of the British experience and they got the arms and the might to get together. And they're the people we owe D-Day, they're the people we owe V-Day, we were only just part of I think, and when you go to battle, the first thing you learn is when you go there macho thinking you're going to kill. You don't go to kill, you give yourself as a ransom, your life as a ransom to the concept of the state as a servant and not the master of its people. And to choose by vote the form of government under which you live. Choose by secret ballot. So anyway, thank mm. you. I'm sorry to keep on. That's okay. He comes downstairs and says, we're asking for a moratorium on any cutting until after VE Day, which is the least they could do to respect what, what we're trying to say, the least he could do to respect.
respect the Canadian war veterans and the war dead. And I'm just disgusted by him and how he can claim to be a representative of the people of this country. Um, I don't know how he sleeps at night. And what about what's the movement that's great Um, last night was quite, quite calm. Yes, I did. Yeah. Well, last night um, the, the sort of numbers of police basically prohibited any form of action, which is in itself a victory because we forced that, and, and that, that they've had to go to such lengths to quell a peaceful protest and a right protest, a protest which is about something which everybody should be standing on our side of, including those police officers. Um, just it sums it up. And the feeling is that this is the whole today just made everything which is a hundred times worse. Isn't it? Well, the, the, it, it is shown, it's shown our government um, to be totally untogether. They've, they've sort of had meetings this morning in, in, in the cabinet. Well, not in the cabinet, but with, um, the Secretary of State for Transport, Michael Mays, um, and another, another high-up official to discuss and come out with the best solution. And that best solution was a moratorium of these trees and they've just not stuck with it. the officers can't make a decision themselves, yeah. but I thought we were big enough to do it. So where exactly do you wish to go? Uh, just want to walk well, across, see where they're I'll, walking I'll, on the far I'll, side, I'll show them the position is, what it's about, uh, and what my side of the dispute is, and we only want to go when they cut down a particular tree. Um, to clarify where we're going, you, you can go the, just into here, supervised by the Not over the other side, yeah. just onto the pavement. You can go, you can go to the pavement there, yeah. and then you'll have to come straight back out uh, here. Uh, can I in show terms the of the felling of trees, then, then no, no, you no. cannot be okay. in yeah. there okay. when trees are being felled. Oh, agree. Well, I agree. I'm not going to have a tree fall on me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> no. but, okay, so but if we're talking about going straight there, you yeah, can go over there. Can I show the, bring back. the media to show them? Well, certainly can. Yeah. Well, you're, you're a gentleman. Okay. You're the first yeah. guy I met at this using Britain. Gosh! I'll leave that there. So this place here, mm -hmm. if you look in there, eight meters over to there where they plant the saplings. Yes? Yeah. Right, now when they planted them, they're falling these trees this way onto this road. So they won't interfere with the saplings. There's plenty of room for them to dig and plant them and clear them out, right? Now, when they planted, when they put the saplings there, they're going to put a barrier like over there. Now, when you ask them where the barrier was going to be, It'll be right about there, right? Right. It's over there. So you say, oh, the barrier's there. Then what about this footpath? We walk up and down it. Oh, 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 oh. They don't know, you see. But what, in fact, the truth of the matter is, you see, uh, people who are walking up and down are softer than the trees. And they've told you they've got to take these trees down because they're too dangerous for the car. Well, if I walk up yeah. and down here and they're going 70 miles an hour and they bounce off like they're doing things, they're going to get hurt. So what they're going to do, to bring the, that's why they don't want you to see it, they're going to widen this road. And they're knocking down the trees for that purpose, for no other reason. And they don't want you to know it. And that it will bring the, this motorway up to European standards. And there you have it in a nutshell. And this is why Michael Mates didn't want to come here up to here and discuss Can I get a picture of you with this tree? Yeah. Just stand by this tree, which is going to... Oh, up. yeah. Well, I'd best ask the officer if it's all right. <laughs> yeah. Just stand there. Yeah. I hope that that will continue. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sorry, uh, your um.
I'm uh, Lynette Robinson, I'm a local resident that feels very, very strongly about uh, the decimation that's happening of these wonderful sycamores um, that were put up in, to commemorate the Canadian soldiers that came to our country to fight for our liberty and our freedom and they died and for each death a tree was put up to commemorate that. Um, we've been lied to all the way along. We've been out here since uh, Monday evening to try and stop the felling of these trees. We were fairly successful on Monday by just creating an awful disturbance and for people to cut, that actually did climb up into the trees. Um, there were six arrests. We've got a new uh, act that's come through Parliament that uh, now gives the police uh, much greater... Um, Yes, sorry, stop for a minute. It's all right. Sorry. No problem. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> it's yeah, so much greater powers uh, for arresting people just uh, for being actually there. People who are making a peaceful march. Um, we, we thought we managed to, to have got this stopped. We've had ministers. Um, our Minister of Transport is uh, Mawini, that uh, we have been uh, trying to get down here. Uh, Mr. Mates, the local MP for this area, at last, it seemed today, swayed Mr. Marwini, the Transport Minister and the Chief Executive of the Highway Authority that's in charge of all this felling. Uh, he swayed them to at least stop felling these trees now until after the 8th of May for the VE celebrations for the Canadian veterans that are coming over here. Mr. Mates came out this afternoon. Do you want to answer the phone? Okay, and rolling. On Monday evening, our peaceful protest um, ended with uh, six people uh, being arrested under the Criminal Justice Act, a new act that has been brought out to stop people like me getting anywhere near um, trees that are about to be felled or any, any protest that we used to be able to march uh, and give our voice to what we feel we no longer can. The great public has been stopped from doing this. But Mr Mates came out today and was interviewed by BBC Television, by CTV Television, by Meridian Television uh, and also for the radio. And he gave his absolute promise that none of these trees are, were going to be felled, as from today. The felling was going to be stopped until after the 8th of May. Then we could carry on with our protest after that, but at least for the veterans that were coming over here, they would see the majority of their trees still standing. It has turned out that we were going to come out here tonight to have a candlelight vigil, to uh, be by the trees that had already been felled, and we were going to uh, come and do this to say our last thanks to the soldiers and go home. And what has happened is that Mr. Mates, Mr. Marwini, 
and the chief executive of the Highways Authority have retracted the promises that they made on television to the public. They have gone back and trees are now being cut down. They reckon that one tree every five minutes is being felled. So I should think by this time tomorrow, most of the trees that commemorate the Canadians will be gone. And I just want the Canadians to know that there are some people here, some of the British public, that feel so strongly about these men that came and gave their lives for our liberty, that we want you to know that we care enough to stand out here as long as it takes, if we can do anything at all, to stop
side of the road. Come on. Other side of the road. change of sit. Is that alright? Yeah, yeah, you take the bag, just so it's kind of like a different person. Mel, 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 the left, yeah. Stop the Mel. You're getting it. I know it probably sounds really miserable, but I just really, you know, I just would rather just be here this weekend. <laughs> it's we need to do a white balance, remember? Mm -hmm. Up along the right the trees.
just let me pass, so I don't I mean, I'll keep it as inconspicuous as possible. Mm. I see what you mean.
Mr. Farquhar, we have some questions for you regarding the A3 tree murders. Yeah, I'm afraid I've got no comment. You know we haven't. Speak to Howie's agency, please. No, we no, we, we do oh. have some specific questions yes. uh, we have about what you've already done. Um, um, I'd like to say, I'd like to say that we want to know the motive behind you claiming that these trees, trees were dead, dying, mm. and decline. Yeah. Um, what was the motive for claiming that? Since they've now been proved not to be true by most wood experts, it's a simple question to a British man from a British woman. Now, let's have a truthful Mr. answer. Fletcher, are you aware? Mary? No, I'm afraid we've got no oh. comment. Well, all I can say, it could be that we're a memorial to Canadian uh, servicemen. Uh, Henry, you're addressing your comments to um, uh, the, not the person who's handling this particular operation. I think uh, he's, you're talking, your, uh, is it a colleague of yours talking to somebody next door? Yes, sir, but we're from the Earth Police and we'd just like to alert you to the fact that the firm you are working for has committed 330 tree murders, which were consecrated as a memorial of 330 Canadian soldiers who died for you to have the freedom to have your job. Thank you. But it's not common can you practice. Stop filming that. Thank you. But it's not common Excuse practice. Excuse me, can you come this end of the building? <coughs> not common practice for a survey report to be done for routine work. Right? That's the landstand no, and highways chair. <coughs> Is that true? Depends what you're talking about and what context you're talking about. Right. Routine work. He does say it is not. It is no, not. It is not common practice. I've got his letter here mm -hmm. for a survey report to be done on routine work. I've got no comment. But I'd sorry. like to know: Would you call felling an avenue of 376 trees, which you told me there were 376 commemorative, commemorative trees, routine work? Because no I'm sure sorry. the public would want to know that. I've got no comment. I'm sorry, you've got the letter there. Right. You've even given it from the highway agency. The, the, the report wasn't dated, which is another very unusual thing, mm -hmm. I would say. But uh, um, we're staggered that we found out from the highways and the, the health and safety people mm -hmm. that you've been planning this for 18 months yeah. without any written report, and this has gone over to Canada. And there's now going to be they're lobbying now for an inquiry, and people like you and and the, all the people involved are going to have to justify right, uh, their actions. We'll do so. And this is going to be such a stink that you never, I realise you never realised no, what no, you were undertaking when you started undertaking all these trees. <coughs> yeah, fair enough. And uh, yeah. everybody's going to have to account for their yeah. actions we'll now. Do so. And uh, there's, a, there's a possibility the there are going to be, uh, by a very wealthy person who's um, outraged, I'm afraid. Um, Payrolls to make some private prosecutions for any receipts and lies that have been gone on about these trees. Because they're down now. But they're a witness to the crime that they've done, that you have done. And that you are going to have to, you know, be called to account for this. Good, and we will do so. And, and you know, well, I'm glad because it's not right that this has been done without the consent of the British people. We've discussed this already. You haven't discussed it. You've discussed it with some parishioners. Yes, exactly. exactly. Come on, we're not getting anywhere with this conversation. We've got no comment to make whatsoever. Well, I, I just I don't know why if you've got a comment to make or not. I've got plenty of comments. Well, we yes, we are members of the public and yes. we have every right to that comment. You're on public service. Because of what those Canadian sages did for you, you have the freedom mm -hmm. to stand here and say no comment in English instead of reciting German, doing goose steps and performing funny salutes. That is the sacrifice that those men performed for you. Yeah. You have come in and totally desecrated the memorial that was consecrated to them. And I think you should find yourself personally and morally accountable for your appalling actions. I feel that you've got the very wrong side of the story altogether. You, you're aware that you have. This sort of issue is a very positive issue in that we are talking about road safety and we are recreating the avenue. Right. Why did you have to lie? If it's road safety, Excuse why me. pretend that the trees are dead and dying? Oh, well, that is part of that argument. Tree murder, well, but we know it's not true. We've had experts doing scientific... And, and you didn't make a written report. You walked along the avenue, didn't do any scientific tests that Mary's Wood experts have done. And, and they said that that wood is so solid and strong that it is a disgrace. Right. There is no, there is a few dead branches, but there's no, not one tree there that should come down but should have some surgery on it, let alone a whole avenue. Do you want to go and speak to the highways agent? I'm sure we've got no comment to make. I am going, going to speak to the highways agent. Because we haven't, we are acting as a client agent to them. Because he can't say anything because he knows damn well. There's well, nothing to do with that. The conspiracy that's we, no, gone on to get these told trees to no down without any public dispute. We have been told not to make any comment by of our client and that's, what, that's our position. Your client? Yes. Highways agent. Yes, right. Yeah, well his head will roll and so will your lot. 
Mr. Fair Williamson, enough. too. I think it's disgraceful that as men, well, you British want, men, never mind your job and your mortgages, face, you mind, what building? about your principles? We've got principles. Now, would you find if you can make comments like that, would you please leave the building? Comments I want to I... know why the, um, uh, foot, the footpath is not closed for five days, but no, for 18, 18 months. months. So what is going on now? Take can it we up have the highways agency. So you haven't requested from the Highways Agency to extend that prohibition for 18 months. So You'll be doing the work with your contractors from Till Hill Forest, whatever they're called. Mm -hmm. Those are the contracts I've since learned. Yeah. Which, are, again, their vans aren't marked, why not? Well, should there be no reason to be? Well, most people, when they are a business, a private business, they you know, they have the opportunity to advertise who they are. Well, should they be? That isn't an argument for us anyway. Well, OK. It's their choice. No, but, I, but all I'm saying is that the Highways Agency will take notice from you of how much time you need to do this, that and the other, and, and, the, away, con and the contractors. So don't tell me... Outside, probably. Uh, no, we feel that you are publicly and personally accountable. You and we Mr. want Williams, you to explain what you have done. He's we not there, told you not to make any comment about Highways Agency in opposition. OK. Why? Why are you afraid? What We're not you afraid. We're not afraid. You know that 330 trees, possibly 380, were consecrated to Canadian servicemen who died for you to stand there and give no comment. Yeah. And you we have lied been for persistently no, we have not to lied. the public. Yeah, we have not you lied. said the trees were diseased. They, some of them are. And we know some from two them. independent witnesses and from a study of the tree stumps that that was a complete yes. lie, which was later admitted. Yes, and, you're and also you said, you said that there were stroboscopic lights dazzling motorists' eyes, in yes. which case, why are there any trees lining any highways? Yes. Yeah. And why did you take down the shrub? And you told me that the healthy tree, you said, of course, a lot of the tree wood's rotten, but we'll have to burn the brush on site and, of course, the rotten wood. But the, the sound wood will be will be given to the, the, the local public free. We now, why, why have I gone over there and yeah. seen it on that funeral pyre? Yes. Great big tree trunks, perfectly healthy, you can see by their cut. Because we haven't had any luck, because you want to take that timber away. Oh, well, I'm going to investigate just yeah. what... What steps you've taken to we ask? Haven't made, we haven't made great steps at all. Oh, you haven't? No, so you expect people to say, oh, look, they're cutting down those we trees. Have got some what are they doing people. with the firewood? We Let's have got go and some get local some. people who have taken some. Oh, can I have their names? No. Well, how many? You can I give a some. number. That's no, the I secret. can't give a number. No, the sort of number. No, why should I? No. Why shouldn't you? Well, we'll find out. Don't worry. We'll find out. We've got people with money behind us now. So, you know, I haven't had that up to now. Otherwise, there would have been an injunction on this. Right. Yes. So, if you want to bring yourself out with any sort of honour like this, you've already told me you're prepared to see us fall. So why should I? Why should I worry? Because you, even now, you've got a because chance for a man to show a little bit of honour. To explain yourself, so we have our faith justified in writing, and we are very happy that situation is there. All right. Yeah. And I have it, witnesses that and one thing this thing's undated. And you told me like the Thursday, the thirtieth of March, that there was no written, nothing on in writing. I was right and everybody's that. staggered at the fact, and the Canadians are staggered. You mean to say they said they are felling all that avenue of trees with no written report to say mm. the state of the trees so that people can challenge it before they did it? She said this is unbelievable. And it, it, the, 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 the Canadian people are up in arms and are outraged by this. And as I say, their MPs are lobbying the Prime Minister that uh, that you're going to be accountable. Even though you're in this country, political pressure can be put on from that Canadian president to our pre Prime Minister, yeah. and you will be made to, to account and show all the evidence for the things that you've given, the reasons to the public why those trees should come down. Yeah, you're a shape, you are, you're a disgrace to the British flag, you lot that have done this, and it's gone on, and the, and the government. An absolute disgrace. Have you finished now? No, no. Well, no. You know, I've got, unfortunately, I'm not prepared to come with you. Please don't leave the building. I think you've had long enough. Had a fair, right, a fair okay, time. all right then. You made your case. That's that, but may, may I just know that Mr Williams, is, and this goes on record, that Mr Williams is not here. He's not in the building. He's not here, no. no. Is he on, when he will, is he, will he be here later today? No, he will not be today. No, so when will he be in? Sometime next week. Does he have a diary? He does have a diary. Well, uh, is it possible to make an appointment to see him? We will ask Mr Williamson to contact you to make an appointment. Right. Yeah? OK, then. Would you mind leaving your number? Yes, I will leave my number. Yeah. Yeah. With the reception. Right, I think That's it's time to go. It's time to go. Come on, out you come. You're going to get around and leave. Well, it's not quite as bad as a chainsaw against you. Remember the chainsaws Remember that killed the 330 soldiers. Remember the chainsaws that killed the 330 soldiers.
Grace, they were the flower of Canadian youth, shipped over here to fight and serve, that we might be forever free of a goose step, ein, zwei, drei, please state. They came in hundreds to these shores when our countryside still smelled of earth and a thousand more colours of butterfly encircled flowers we see no more thanks to steel and concrete gods of greyness raised today in the raw of progress. They hatched from mother's wombs wrenched sore to breathe a few forgotten years, then trembling in a vivid courage, their chance to dance was scorched to ashes. They lost it all, they gave up all for the rest of us. These were real men of flesh and blood, not medallions of an ancient Jesus, that we might be forever free of a goose step circus which specialised ein zwei drei in a hundred gas chambers of modern, roaring, new age progress. Six hundred trees were planted for them, each consecrated to one of six hundred men. Not gravestones heaped upon a pavement, but a living, natural memorial, a monument to their total braveness. Six hundred sturdy maple trees whose green-leafed fingers touch the sky, and though the unborn wonder, what were trees? Mummy, what bygone unicorns are these? I must assure our tiny sons of daughters Trees really were quite lovely creatures. Possibly, as a jester said, they were of a bygone age and thus were frightening. Possibly, as one soldier jested, they needed to go as a danger to lightning. But who could deny, for the sake of progress, they had to go. They terrorised all passing cars. So when the Maple Avenue was finally felled and ripped down like British credibility so that no more could their wet green natural smells violate our windscreen shielded sanctity it was conspicuous that five or six full riot vans of mocking helmets should form a two-mile wall of armour to keep at bay the progress harmour that unconsulted local resident who desperately wanted the trees to stay at least for five more weeks until the Canadian veteran survivors came to remember their comrades on VE Day. Do I detect an ironic sniff of fate that the New World Order's Anglo police state forms its wall of leather booted armour to protect the modern would-be men who ripped down the final monument 
to those who died at barely adult age to stop the rise of a police state's hate. Thank you. Right, rolling. We have just, uh, I'm Cynthia Goldthorpe, we have just um, paid a visit to the Forest Enterprise offices and in the hope of speaking to Mr Williams, um, but he was unavailable. We followed the secretary and uh, managed to find Mr Farger in his office and put the questions that are noted on this recording, giving this man one more chance, really, to give us the reasons why this heinous crime against this monument has been committed. Um, we didn't really expect him to give us any such information and he confirmed this by, by saying that he was no comment to make, that uh, he has been instructed by their clients, which is Highways Agency, that should they be questioned, that there was no comment that he could make. And uh, we just thought it would be give him one more chance really, just to, as, a, as, a, as a British man, seeing now this destruction that, that they have wrecked on those trees, just to deem a little bit of honour and give us some information that um, we'll, so that we could get behind their real motives. But we are not giving up, we are going to carry on until we get to the real bottom and the truth behind this, this, this heinous crime. And how is it left? Did, did he say that um, the other chap may call you for an appointment? I asked if I could see Mr Williams make an appointment um, and he said tomorrow or later today and he said that he would be in next week and that I'm expecting a telephone call now from Mr Williams when he's consulted his diary that I may go and see him and put certain questions to them, give him a chance now to come clean.